What's up guys, this is Heiss, and today we're building a hump yard in Railroads Online, because, you know, Khan said he'd like to do some humping, and uh, I've been excited to hump with Khan for quite some time here. Been talking about it for a while, so let's get into it, shall we? We doing some right. humping. <laughs> Third person and standing out of the gauge, Khan, it's important, okay? Safety, safety first. But look at look at this, look at this. I'm a rule breaker. I'm Ooh, gonna... he's in danger. He's in danger. danger. Look at you. You'd totally get nailed by a silent train if it uh, if one were to come. Ghost train. Ghost. Dude, you the would murderous ghost train. You would be it shocked. All the people. You would be we're shocked how we're quiet they are. <laughs> what are we? What are we dressed as? We're dressed as conductors. Con uh, yeah, vaguely, kind of. Yes. We're vague, vague conductors. Uh, according to Turbo Squid, this is an old west train conductor. So. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, today we're gonna build a hump yard. Yep. Yep. We're gonna we're gonna hump. We're doing a candid intro today. Heist. Yeah, candid. just straight candid. Yep. Straight into the humping. Uh, it's just we're gonna just happen. gonna get right into the humping. We we made sure that we're gonna have enough space to do. Oh all yeah, the I laid a really long straight track in this flat valley because it's it kind of seems like an awesome space to build a giant yard. Um, compared yeah, exactly. to the freight. Oh, this is this is massive, and I don't honestly know anything about hump yards other than the fact that they sound funny. <laughs> and um, well, yes. no, okay. I understand you you push cars up a hill and then they go down the hill with gravity. And then my understanding of the modern ones is they have brakes built into the track itself, so they can brake the cars where they want them to. But basically, they go down this hill and you stop the cars and you can use it to assemble trains. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But I don't really understand the geometry of it beside that point. Now, because railroads online is really weird and we don't really have a need to assemble loaded trains uh we're going to use it to hump empties so we can have ideally one lane for each of the different types of empty cars and then we can hump them into the appropriate lane to sort of reassemble trains and then when we want to you know take a train out we just cut it and pull it off the end of the hump and re-hump more later there's a lot of humping going on yeah and, it, and it's definitely the thing that makes the most sense for railroads online because everything's unit trains and everything pretty much running the other way from the freight depot that we've already got built is going to be just a dedicated train set running that way but when you start getting more to the oil field it's like you don't need a whole train of box cars you don't really need a whole train of steel pipes so it's like right you end up with this mixed freight that's moving around and so being able to sort those cars uh it's going to be really helpful and really the only opportunity to realistically use one of these in some sort of operational sense that makes you know any amount of sense at least in the game yeah i i, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news but i i do plan on deleting that track and bringing it all the way back and having the loop at the end of the hump lane so every time we come in now we're gonna have to drive through the hump yard and or like past the hump yard and go around it and then come oh, it's back gonna make it uh it's gonna make it nice and long yeah yeah just a really long you know people gotta really enjoy the experience you know what i mean like we gotta really gotta really commit to the the humping Precisely, precisely. So, I so mean, yeah, this is this is how far we got. I got a straight line. Uh, we can't go any further left of this because it gets close to that valley at the gotcha. end. Gotcha. So, so uh, the yard's gonna go to the right of that. We got plenty of space there. Um, it's yeah. probably way like way plenty of length there. I guess the question is, do we want the hump on this end or do we want it on the other end? I don't understand how the hump. So my my biggest problem with understanding the hump geometry is where does the locomotive go? Because if you want to hump empties, you need to have the locomotive, like, does it pull them up a hill and then just let them go? Or does it push, like, it would make sense to push them up the hill, right? But then yeah. how do you... Yeah, so like, let how me... Do you, so you have to have your locomotive... Like, if I'm coming... Let's say I'm coming in with a full train. So choo-choo, here I come in this direction, right? My locomotive's out in front. Now what? Okay. So I'm here. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna make a, a diagram for you real quick. Uh-oh. Are you drawing it in real life? I'm, I'm drawing it? it. I'm drawing it with track real quick. Okay. So, uh, on, on the real set of hump yards, or on, on a real hump, you have a dedicated drill track again for your switcher to go live in, right? Right. And sometimes, it depends on the operation, and it depends on exactly what the railroad wants to do and everything, um, oh my and God, how big the hump, hump is. That, that's a 10% that's a just for fun, just to get the point across. And... Uh, <laughs> QMA's video game's not letting me link track here, but anyways, the, the switcher could live off of this stub, or he right. could live off of a stub behind here where he could run into uh, a inbound track. So we have a passing track in between these two tracks. Right, which would probably make sense to have. Ro it's road engine comes in, drops their cars off, they cut and run to mechanical to go get serviced. 
And then right. whatever the yard goat is can then come in, grab those cars, back down the drill track that has access to all of the yard tracks, including the hump, and then he can shove over the hump. And then as they go oh, so over... So the drill track in this case is really long. It's like really long, long, so you could fit an engine and uh, and cars and, and everything. Right? Yeah. So we can. So get ideally, we should my move this here. switch. We should move this switch further down. I mean, it depends on on exactly where we want the yard to be. We got plenty of length going that way. I mean, or we, we should have this divert and then go back into a parallel line to this line, basically. Yeah. So you'd want to have basically something where it would be the start of the track for the switcher. So you'd want to. Yeah, get it curved like that, but then we want to build, a, rather than having a switch like that, we're going to want to have a switch that links on the straight end that goes... Well, don't we, want we don't we want this to be straight for a no, while? So th this doesn't let the switcher get there is the thing. So put the switch back, and we'll get rid of this piece of track here. What, what do you mean? Put, put the, the switch switcher. back like you just had. Right, okay, I'm, I'm very, I'm, yeah, I'm just thoroughly listen confused. The, listen to the directions, Con. All right, so then this switch, go, now delete your switch, and then we're going to build a, um, just just connect the piece with a uh, piece of track. Oh, I see what you're so, saying. So, see, the, the switcher that's going to okay. be coming off somewhere other than the main needs to be able right. to get at the back of the train here. So you need to be able oh, to this, pull past this, the switch. Now, this track we make long enough for the train to basically come in and then and then we switch it back onto the main at some point. Yeah, exactly. So this is this will be kind of like your departure track or or arrival okay. and departure track and this, at least this in our drill case. This track here can go back really to like a a, so a little this, switch with an engine shed or something. This is still going to be the lead, but yes, ultimately it can get there. The drill track is just the straight track at the very end. So this is going to be the hump lead is what we're going to call this. So as this goes up this way, we're going to have to have another switch, and then that'll be the switch for the hump itself, and then we can have the drill track beyond that, and the switcher can okay, live so at the end of the build, track there or whatever. I can build this straight out parallel for a crazy distance. Yeah, long enough that any train on. that we're conceivably going to run can pull in and fit. So, you know, something like 20 cars maybe. I, I guess maybe we'll run more than 20 someday, but we got space. Well, right, or the other... Right, because this is the track that if you have like a 50 car train, you're going to park it on this track and then take it in cuts to, to do the hump. Exactly. Depending on, yeah, depending depending on, on how big your Just what your train it is, is. And, and how much, how many tracks in the hump we have and, and everything. Okay, so. gotcha. So I'm going to build this really as long as I possibly can is really where it's at. Yeah, basically, whatever you got space for, which is kind of how a lot a of yards lot. end up being you know made actually you look at yards and it's like well how much space did they have that's what they did there you go that's that's the way it works yeah so far i'm at 350 meters uh and oh it despawned okay so 350 meters that's a big spline Qmay can can track link link in your video game is that is that an option got to turn off circle mode uh circle mo okay there it is uh it's still not working I'll be there in a sec. Oh, we'll try rotating. <laughs> I need an the adult. Track, track building is hard. Oh, okay. Hang on. Wait, that's that's for the wrong track though. All right. So I am making. Uh, this track is about half a kilometer long. It is 500 meters long. Okay, it's a solid length for for narrow gauge trains. We'll be able to put lots of cars in that. Regardless, I feel like there's no way we're going to be running something bigger than half a kilometer you yeah, know what i mean half like, I a kilometer like... you're talking about yeah that'd be like a, almost 100 cars probably yeah so i that's, don't think that's i don't think we're pretty solid to... yeah yeah okay so there we go so i'm gonna put this switch back now this doesn't need to go in. it just needs to switch back onto the main that's it right like nothing nothing fancy yep just switch back into the main we'll probably need another switch kind of like this for the other oh, end God, look at that kink wow <laughs> you're getting kinky track over then the hump dude i mean this is uh this is like a wow that is the track went like straight and then did a 90 like just a sharp oh, weird yeah, you're gonna need to have another track for another lead track or another switch for another lead track like we have down at this end wait i need a lead track on this end too yeah because you have to have the flat side and you have to have the hump side so okay. on on the real thing you have cars that say do not hump which i made that silly video about where they can't be sent over the hump because they're filled with breakable things or they're packaged in some way or they're crew cars or whatever that shouldn't go over the hump. And so those cars need to be added in from the flat end 
And then also, very typically in railroad operations, you have things go wrong, and you have things that end up in the wrong track, and you need to be able to deal with those without then trying to bring them up and over a really steep hill again, or that whole cut of cars again. Ow. And so they'll switch from the flat end with that. So you need to have leads on both ends. How did we... We screwed this up somehow. How did we screw These this lines up? are... Uh, they're not parallel. Somehow they're not the same width at the front and the back. Somehow, like, it widens. Like, they should be the width of two switches, but for some reason at the other end, they don't. Like, I put two switches and they don't line up anymore, so I gotta. Might have to fix this. So you're telling me that. Two parallel lines are no longer parallel mm -hmm. when they get to the end. Mirroring, uh, mirroring assets before you import them into a game is really hard. Is that what you're telling me? Maybe. Maybe. How are you doing, chopping trees? You doing good? You I'm, a good I'm time? doing good. I, I still couldn't link track, so I figured I'd just come be a lumberjack instead. That's very interesting that these aren't parallel. Yeah, you can kind of see the see it in the groundwork how much they're intersecting. Yeah, I don't understand why they're not parallel. I'm just gonna put switches on both ends and then I'll fix it. Yeah, it's yeah, and if you just run it switch to switch instead of trying to keep the alignment, yeah. That so yeah, I'll run it switch to switch and then put the lead after. Yeah, oh, precisely. So the the two lead styles would be a little bit different as well. The hump has what's sort of like a nested lead of switches where right. you're, you're trying to make the car run through as few switches as possible to get to its destination. Because you're and trying to... So you reduce friction type deal? No, nah, that... it's just so you can reduce complexity in moves. So when you're trying to, you know, line switches for the setup, you don't want to have to go, okay, well, we've got a 60-track yard, and it runs through all 60 of the lead switches that are placed just end to end to end to end. You know, you want to nest them so it's like, okay, well, it goes through the main left or right switch, and then it has, okay, second left or right switch, to, you know, going to nested groups of track so that you have fewer decision points. So in the early days, when you're talking about humans being out there lining the switches, okay, well, you only need so many people and they can each have a, a zone so, of the hump to take care of. But now we tracks though, like, are you gonna, would they be in a line or would the switches diverge out from like the center point? So you'd, be, like, you'd, you'd, be, the and then... you'd be nesting it so that each time you can pick two. So you have the first switch that goes from the bottom of the hump to left and right. And then each of those has a switch, and then that gets you four tracks, and then each of those has a switch, and etc. Although I'm, I'm so doing my math wrong. So it's basically like you go like yeah. left, left, right, left, A, B, start on limited lives. Exactly. So, so you're only picking so many switches to run through rather than just running down the straight side. But typically on the flat end, it'll be set up in the more conventional way where you have all of the switches just straight in a line. Maybe it's left and right, but... You have them all set up in a line that way, and uh, that way it's easier for the train crew to visually see what's going on, and they're not trying to read uh, points that are <laughs> kind of confusing when they're nested into a, in that setup. So, all right. Well, while I lay out this extremely amazingly straight line, which now I think is actually the proper distance to do the switching, um, which is great. Uh, I had a comment, and I'm going to look it up. Someone asked me to ask you about something, and it seemed uh -oh. very specific, and I wasn't sure what it was. Okay. So let I'm me ready. Just, let me just pull this up here. Ask uh, me anything. Comment. Uh, I would love to hear Heist tell Khan about the great locomotive chase of 1862. <laughs> Why is th is that a thing? Was there a that that is that is actually a, a hilarious there was a great thing. locomotive chase? Like yes, there was. It was a American Civil War era, where oh I can't I can't remember the exact details of what caused the chase. Whether it was spies in the north that were in the south or what it was, um, but they ended up spies basically stole a locomotive and ran with it. Um, with some car of either there was valuables or they were just planning to destroy the rail line or something. I don't remember enough of the details. I wish I you could have briefed me on this. Ah! I, for, I totally forgot about it until we were just doing a mundane <laughs> task. You know? Or you um, got time. You could, you could look it up. And, I, and I can, work. but it, I don't know. It's fun to always just try and recall what you can off the top of your head, too. But it, it's All a right, neat story. The down here anyway, so. it's, a, it's a neat story because, I mean, it, the, the, they literally chased them back with a second locomotive and it was 
you know, quite the ordeal back in the day, and it was a good story. Like down a single track, like a single line. Single track railroad, two engines, uh, you know, one of, of each side of the battle, and I'm sure everyone in the comments is now going to have the field day of field days with the, the full answer for us. Uh, now and what, they were, they were just chasing each other down the same track, like, were they both aiming forwards, or was it more comedic, like one was in reverse, and... Ah, uh, you know... I'm struggling to remember what was the history. It's like it's right out of a cartoon, you know what well, I mean? Well, like so not... Bust, Buster Keaton, early film uh, star and everything, was a, a part of a movie called The General that did the depiction of this event. And so I'm struggling to remember the, the facts from the movie, which was just having fun and trying to tell the spirit of the story and then the actual event that happened itself. Um, and I can't recall which, which is which. Um, but at least in the movie, they do end up a little bit both ways. But I'm not sure uh, exactly how that worked out when, with the uh, the real thing back in the day. I'm going to have to look up some details here so I don't get crucified in the comments too hard. All right. So we have a 500 meter long passing track. Okay. So my train comes in here. I've got a bunch of empty cars. I park the train on this line. I cut my road engine off and it disappears into inevitably some sort of roundhouse area that we've got going on. Yep. And then now you've got a line of empties here and we're going to pull the empties all the way back this track. Yep. Wouldn't we need a huge track for that then? Yep. So we should probably <laughs> do this. We should probably have this switch cut in a little further up that you, line. You could then, have right? it cut in a further up the line. There's a lot of different ways to do it. We could have the. Because we're gonna run out of space here. Otherwise, we have tons of space this way. We so can have we the move, inbounds. We that up then. We can do that. Yeah, I guess we do. We will run out of space with that. And then, then that because we're gonna run out of space here. To, we're only gonna be able to cut like ten cars at a time. Then that way. Yeah, which is not ideal. So we cut it in a little bit later. Make it a little bit longer here. Um, and then, yeah, sometimes they would have the inbound tracks like before the hump so that it would be more linear, but we're kind of dealing with the space that we have in the game with, with what makes sense. So it's all sorts of interesting. <laughs> I'm trying to set up the, uh, the spacing on all the lanes here. We want to do what we are thinking about eight, right? Yeah, but wouldn't the lanes be like further down the other way? Yes, but we can build them off of this. I, I just need to know where the uh, where the actual hump lead is going to be because it's got to be in the My only center concern is we're really. going to potentially run into a hill. Look on the right there. There's a little bit of a hill we have to get past. Oh, I'm seeing that. Yeah, but I don't know. So if I so if we I put a switch up here now, right? Okay. So well, if I have let a me switch, let me come build up there. I'll just delete everything I worked so hard for. Well, we there. actually we I I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we actually have to space them using switches, not using crossover pieces, because the crossover piece spacing and the switch spacing is not. Um, ah, let me, QMA. <laughs> let me. So if I do this, and I do this, see how they don't line up if I like. Uh, an no, because I'm over here. But yes, I. Oh, can well, come, come on back. over here, and I'll show you. Let me let me align this track. Okay, I'm delete. Well, you still need that switch, don't? Oh, I see. You're, you're saying this. We switch in, so I need another switch on the main here. We come in here, and then yeah. This becomes, ah, Cause, cause that, I, that, I, otherwise, that space doesn't get you anything. Right, right. I got you. I got you. Okay. I want to move. Uh, yeah. So that'll that'll be enough of a hump lead. Okay. So I need to switch here, and then here, which that just completely eradicates everything you're doing. That's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry that's, about that's it. So fine. this was this is that line. Okay. Well, don't worry. I'm understand. I'm slowly. I'm slowly picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things that, like, once you see how a train has to operate through it, it will just make sense. All and right. We can, so we can we connect, can do it that. Yeah. You can connect that up to there, and I'll connect this one up to the other direction, and then and then this is okay. So now this makes sense. Then our hump lead can go back and kind of wrap towards the freight depot, so we could really hump a huge train. Yeah. I like humping big trains. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun too. Have you? So you've humped trains in real life? No, before? no, I have not. <laughs> oh, okay. I That's was just, like I was just being silly. I've never. I, when I worked with a railroad, I mean, I worked for BNSF, which is the biggest railroad in North America. Um, right. Or actually, I say that, but the, one of the Canadian railroads might be more track. I don't know. Uh, at least the biggest I mean, in the United Canada's States. A big place. I yeah. To be the, yeah. But we um, have a lot of volume of stuff. BNSF didn't have the biggest hump in the in, in the states. I think UP has the biggest yard, but the hump yard at Kansas City I did spend some time at, 
and it's pretty impressive. It's called the Argentine Yard, and the, the bowl, which is where all the shunt lanes in the hump live, uh, is 68 tracks wide. So That's a lot. It's a lot of tracks, but they and, also and have... How long are they? Like, kilometers, or like what? Uh, you know, it's probably... Yeah, I mean, to use metric, they would probably be a kilometer and a half or two kilometers long, if I had to guess. That's insane. All right, so... Might be wildly off base, but should be close. Road engine comes in here straight. Yep. Main line is on the left. Road engine comes in here straight, parks on this siding, unloads, gets back on the main, and screws off. Yep. Engine comes in from behind on this track, picks up cars from behind, and pulls them backwards onto a track that I'm going to go that just ends in a dead end. Yeah, precisely. But I'm really, going to try... But it's really long. Basically. So if I space things out using switches just in a ladder like this, is the is the spacing okay? It should be, yeah. The, the thing is you have to do it with the switches because then we can switch, like reverse switch it back, right? Okay, gotcha. I so think. I can space them out this way because I need to kind of find center in order to make the hump make some amount of sense. There's going to be a lot of uh, actual spline track in the middle between the switches, but I gotta get all eight lanes figured out. So that's our run through lane, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one more switch, and then a reverse switch will get us there. And I'm just gonna. I'm bringing this line in at um. I'm bringing this line in at a curve so that I can make it like a little longer. I feel like that's not a, necessarily a bad thing. No, that's pretty commonplace. If you ran out of space, I mean, you have to have the the lead. It's do gonna be like a hundred meter do. radius or some nonsense, like 150. It'll dude, be dude big. we're in the yard. It doesn't matter what radius you pick. <laughs> right, because we're going like slow as sin. Like we're not. Yeah, we're not trying to send it here. Yard speed is usually by rule, depending on the kind of yard or facility, is somewhere between five and 15 miles an hour top speed. So wow. pretty slow. Okay. Most yards like are actually more at the ten but, fifteen. But, but like, what happens? What happens yeah. when you have to put it in notch eight? <laughs> because it's thirty nine cars. Well, I mean, sometimes it's like... thirty nine cars, and it uh, it'll take you a while at notch eight to <laughs> get up to speed. There must be thirty nine really heavy cars when you've got two forty four hundred horsepower locomotives on the front end. It stares at unstoppable, but you know it's fine. Forty four hundred horsepower. That's just ridiculous. That's like uh, that's that's. Pretty much the bog standard locomotive these days is 4,400 horsepower. It's just what they are. Twelve wheel drive. Uh, depends. Yes, usually, not always. Some of two the sets, two sets of two sets of six. Two right? sets like of six, so three axles per truck. So t yeah, twelve wheels total. But the interesting thing is that some of them. Um, some of them don't... Oh, goodness, I can already see what you're saying. The spacing's weird. Although the spacing between a crossover versus switches in a... Yeah, diff... they're all different. Okay, well, it, that'll work out. Bro, our, our lead line for this hump yard, it goes all the way back and touches the freight depot. Beautiful. I like it. Yeah, so um, some modern I'm locomotives... I'm realizing I can redo this entire curve now, too. It doesn't need to bow out to curve back over. Oh, it's it true, because just... it's not doing a, a loop anymore, is it? Yeah, it's not going to do a loop here. It's going to loop at the end. I'll fix it. Don't worry. You get While it. I come back and admire your beautiful shunt work, just watch out for that hill because we might have a... We might have a might we're have a we're avoiding it right now, but we will see. Right now I'm trying to figure out where my center is. So I got four, five, six, seven, eight lanes. So this is like somewhere between I mean, we four only, and you five. said you want to do an eight lane hump right like that's what we're... yeah that's what i'm going for so we'll, we'll kind of figure out what it looks like from here now but yeah the um the modern engines a lot of the the uh the uh people who do the math and come up with the ideas people uh at ge came up with the idea that okay well you can still put down the same horsepower theoretically with four traction motors so four ma motors four axles but have the loading of six, so they have an idler wheel set in between the uh, the two motors. So you have four powered axles on a six powered locomotive. And for most cases, like if you're hauling, you know, higher speed, lighter tonnage, like in remodel trains with the 
stack containers. Those do pretty good, but uh, any engineer who ever has run a coal drag with a bunch of heavy loaded coal hoppers and stuff will tell you that you don't get the same pulling power out of the the four traction motor guys, and so they usually still use the um, the older EMD power on the the stuff that actually yeah, goes you, up. Yeah, you'd never get tonnage. you'd never get the same traction out of it anyway. Right. Well, so they do like, because like you have you have a a wheel in the middle that is basically absorbing some of your normal force it's true just... but they do have some tricky engineering to help that make sense like what suspension so the middle wheel doesn't actually do as much like because no matter what it's... any any weight that is on your middle wheel is, is taking weight, weight not away going to your yes. normal force the, the argument your friction. the argument was that you weren't they weren't using all of the friction theoretically previously they weren't using all of the friction so they didn't need all the weight but they did add a neat piece of engineering called the DWM system which stands for like delta weight management or I don't remember exactly what it stands for okay. someone will get me in the comments um, where they could actually dynamically or maybe it's dynamic weight management that makes more sense uh they would dynamically raise and lower that middle wheel not so much that it came off the track but enough to put the extra weight on the pulling motors when they needed it right, it's powered by a, like a or... like a cam yeah, yeah. and some air cylinders people think they're more brake cylinders but they're actually air cylinders that run the this DWM all seems system. like a lot of a lot of hooey to save motors that's kind of what it well the motors you know, this, do it, this actually seems like the motor salesman trying to convince me that four motors is better than six the, i mean you're not wrong but at the same time motor failures are probably the most common big delay and crappy failure the railroad has to deal with right if i had to guess from from my experience with bnsf um yeah, that was never All right, fun. Are we ready to start humping yet, or what? We're, we're getting here? we're getting close-ish. I've um, got the track that we can pull back on and then flick over here. I think I think we're gonna want to extend. So, the, uh, what I'm trying to place right now and figure out where to place is the first switch of the hump, and I think it that can go about there. Into, into all so the if you build a hill, a steep hill, you know, lighter on your side and then steeper on this side, maybe I'll give I'll, I'll give you a little 10% grade down off of this switch that you need to mate into, and then whatever it ends up being is what it ends up being. Um, but this is kind of going to be where our hump is. So we'll have a transition piece to 10%, and then maybe that much 10%, just so it's not stupid long and then i'll give it a transition oh, no, we can go, oh we can go more than that even at like two percent there i had tons of space we can go much bigger okay uh bigger well then you, you you monkey with the geometry is that there enough if you'd space like. for you you should lay out your switches first though because you're gonna run out of space to the left aren't you no i laid out my track so this is smack in the center so we should based be okay off, based off that track yeah so it should it should work out we'll see here hang on so there's one switch I have all the building tricks, Heist. I have all the tricks. <laughs> you do. He knows. He knows how to do this. And then we do this. Okay, so then we have four there. And then... I probably need to run a little bit longer, actually. And then put the next switch. And so that'll be for the last two lanes there. Oh, I see. You see what's going on here? Yeah, the running distance you're gonna have to if you want these to all be perfectly parallel lanes. Oh yeah, that's gonna get which we can do. We we're gonna have to do some magical switch work. So this is where I would say cue the the epic nineteen hundreds time lapse music and we just sort of <laughs> yes. some fancy we're, magic we're, to make we're gonna, like we're, we'll we won't see you in a minute, the hump folks. yet, but we'll just like parallel all this stuff up because it's gonna suck. Yes, it is. We'll see you on the other side, folks. Yeah. Uh, so after much deliberation... Yeah, this we, all makes sense. This is exactly what it has to look like. We, we now realized what we had to do, and we started yeah. from the wrong end. You don't want to start from the fun, humpy end. You want to start, no, you from, want to start the from the lane end. the non-humpy end. end. Yeah, the non-humpy end. But remember, you got to get to that, that switch point over there. Like your, your switch coming off is that way, so you need this to... Yeah, so, well, so right now I'm just kind of getting a vector diagram here of where do exactly do I want to put the switch? Because this right. is the first switch, and, and we realize like, this is the least important one because it has nothing to do with parallel lanes or anything like that. So I kind of want to split the difference between these as best as I can. 
All right, I'm which getting the lane started, and then I'm gonna delete the. Which is gonna be a little silly. I'm gonna get the lane started and then delete the excess nonsense that we've got going on here. Unfortunately, I think that might be the best option. All right, let me delete this. And why does that feel like it's so much higher? Uh, I don't know. Because I think it is. Well, I mean, more more gravity always helps, but I think I can probably just relay it. So I'm going to do that. Uh, shoot. Okay, no matter. Okay. And looking it over, I mean, that should probably be okay, but is there space for the hump in between now is the question. It probably should be. Yeah, I mean, we want a, as big a hump as possible, right? So. Yeah, we, we learned the uh, the pains of the bearings last time. That's for sure. Yeah, well, if our hump is steep enough, then the back car should just push the front ones forward, right? Like, if we have a nice 10% hump, then that should be... Yeah, it really depends on how many cars we're cutting at a time. Because, I mean, uh, at least for us, it'll probably be big groups of cars. It won't necessarily be, like, one or two yeah, or Yeah, like, something we're not like going to cut... You know? We're gonna cut cars generally all of the same type. We're not gonna hump two different types of cars if we don't have to, because what would be the point? You gotta put them in two different lanes, right? Which I guess if they're doing a hump yard, you wouldn't do that. You'd hump everything going into the same lane at once, or would you hump multiple? Well, though, so the whole point of the hump is to sort trains easily. You take a manifest right. train that came from, you know, it's it's running to Chicago vaguely, but it stops in Kansas City say and it, it came from seattle originally okay a bunch of cars came from seattle well some of them need to go to kansas city that need to be sh switched out by a local some of them are going to chicago long term some of them are going to go back at certain ways or whatever and so you need to split that train apart so you're taking a train that's maybe 100 plus cars of cars for various different destinations and trying to sort them by where they need to end up so that you can efficiently get the train to its destination. But because... will they cut it on the hump or will they hump the sections cut individually before? Oh, well, so they absolutely uh, cut it on the hump because that's the whole point of the hump. The, the whole point is not to just run a train over, over the hill for the sake of funsies. The whole point is to make sure that you're actually cutting the cars and getting them to sort on the hump. It's just so a big sorting we, device. When we get to the end of this episode and we're inevitably going to grab all those empties that we have in those shunt lanes we're gonna assemble them all to one long train and hump it all at once basically yeah pull them with the switcher one time and then we kept the cars as they go over the hill line the switches and make sure that they end up in the right track okay there you go interesting that's, uh, I'm... that's that's the whole thing so i mean it's it's a sorting device imagine you know okay you're, you're doing this the feels dishes. Like it's gonna be a really a really aggressive turn to yeah, make here. It might the... be. So I'm trying to I'm trying to put this together and to get around this to get around the switch stand because these switch stands are obnoxious. That'll probably clear, but I don't know if I like. I think like we can move so. that. You can move that switch back further. Oh, it needs to come back more still. No, like like closer to the like I think. Oh, you okay. Can, go, can like, get here. closer. Okay, that'll help. Yeah, like let me let me see here. Like if I go to there. Oh, but you don't want it to be you don't want it to be on that angle though. You want it to be biased to the you know, so that it acts as a Y switch rather than a right. you know, so you want to buy well bias it uh, the other way. So wait, I want it to go You wanna have the straight edge kinda aimed towards the the right, if it's a diverging left switch, and then you wanna make it sit up right. So somewhere in there it ends up having okay, the so Oh, that's actually kind of how I spaced it. That's kind of funny. Is is that the spacing we were looking for this whole time? Is one switch I, aimed that way? I don't, I don't know. It might be. That's yeah, kinda, that's kind of hilarious. It actually is, and now it's perfect curve. Wait. So <laughs> how did we sit there and argue over this? You just need so a long. switch in between your switch, Ice. Like, see, I I was telling you earlier. I've done so many stupid tricks back when you had to like build track the old school way. That why this why is did that this, work? Look at this. This is actually perfect. Now. Why did that work? Don't worry about it, Ice. Don't why question that, it. I'm so mad. I'm right gonna now. save because look at that. That's amazing. That's eight yards, <laughs> eight lanes, perfectly symmetrical humping. I love that's symmetrical actually, humping. That's actually fantastic. This this satisfies my OCD brain to a level you don't Pecan even understand. Pecan has just gotten very excited, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited right now. I'm gonna go change. All right, let's let's build some humps. Is that a 10% hump? Is that what that is? That is. I'm trying not to make it too stinking long because I don't know. Are humps so humps are short? They're very like they're, they're not. They're a long... usually pretty short, and they're, and they're not usually ten percent. They're usually probably something more like five or you know four or five percent. 
Uh, right. And the car is but, rolling. I mean, friction is like really easy in real life, right? So well, yeah. Roll, we have roller bearings on our cars now, and so that's why we have brakes. Like they can get going way too fast. Um, I'm considering that we've got narrow gauge cars, and they're much shorter, and and we also don't have so much space, which is more why I'm building this short. But all right, I'm gonna go up at two percent just for fun. Just for funsies. And, and see see where I end up. Yeah. So I end up short of your hump at two percent. It's not. Uh, this is too tall still. Well, I end up short of your hump by about maybe a foot. But like, I can connect it up. If I go, let me see here. If I go, oh no, that's only because I'm in circle mode with it straight. But then if I turn it off circle mode, two percent actually puts me up above you. Oh really? Okay. Well then we can run it a little what? bit longer. Then. Look, look at this. Look at this. This makes no. This makes no sense. If it's zero zero radius, no, put your hump back. I can link to that. Yeah, it's if I go zero radius in circle mode, two percent says I'm here. Okay. Straight. This is a straight line off the switch, right? Okay. Obviously, we're gonna have it bend a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna do a bit of an S bend because reasons. That's two percent in circle mode. Okay. So that's that's you know putting it circle mode radius zero whatever, and that's where I end up. Okay. This is two percent outside of circle mode. Well, so that makes objectively no sense. <laughs> So I don't know what's actually two percent. Well, no wonder. So the I'm just gonna link up your up. ten. I feel like I feel like we could just link. That's a big enough hump, really. That's that's all we need. Uh, is it'll just probably work. We don't need a longer hump than that. Like that's. I mean, the real ones would be longer, but we we only have so much space between the switches here. Well, we can we can go up at like three percent. We can back the hump up more. Okay, well, I mean, we can bring it up just like, a little up, bit longer. Like, if we go up 10% a little bit further, let me go up at 3% and kind of meet up with you and see where that... Like, realistically, yeah. we're humping empties, right? So, uh, 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 they class should be 48, light. They, should, they, sh they should do 60, okay. 60,000 pounds of empties, right? And, like, if we get a big... Let me go up at, like, 2.5% here. Let me see what happens. Yeah, I don't understand why circle mode lowers the percentage. It's, that's, that's, <laughs> it is a little strange. Yeah, I don't know. So a two and a half percent basically meets where you're at now. Okay. Well, this is a long. So that's period. that's a two and a half percent little S. It looks kind of it's kind of bad. I'm gonna fix that a little bit so we kind of. Yeah, maybe if you, if you lay it straight for a little bit, then start the S curve, but get it get yeah, the grade going. So, yeah, yeah, I think going. that'll that'll make it look nice. I'm gonna lay it straight at like three and a half percent first because that's. Actually, I need. I'm gonna go a little bit to the right, just because then I'll the avoid switch stand. This, yeah, yeah. the switch stand. Yeah, yeah. The switch stand. Yeah. So if I go like that, like that, okay. And then I can curve back. Interesting. I mean, we are. Yeah, we are humping empties, so it feels like this should be easy enough to do. It should be. It shouldn't be too bad. The cars are all, you know. Roughly ten thousand ish pounds. Oh god, that looks so, so janky. That is a little, little, little silly looking. We could put a curve before on this end before the hill. I don't know. I'm not sure what would look nice. Just need to avoid this switch stand. That's good enough to avoid it. Yeah, I love how his math falls apart. But... Right, it just like stops working for some reason. It's just like what? It's so it looks so janky all the time because you just have to dodge that stupid switch. Yeah, yeah. I wish we had realistic we switch curve stands. The hill, unless we curve before these, the hill. These these are realistic switch stands, and they look pretty decent, but they are wrong for this kind of switch. Oh, hold on. Let's so, just do this. Let's just flip this. If we had ground throws right now, we would have no problems, but here we are with these giant, super uber long narrow gauge switches with the wrong switch stand on them. <laughs> if we flip that. Oh. Yeah, you could do that. That would save your S-bend troubles. It just make yeah, it and now we turn. can make the hump straight. Okay, okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I don't know how you did that, though. You went, like, what, 3% up? Oh, I just went 10% up and then just, like, put it slow, you know, like, at the right distance to make it have a decent vertical curve. Because vertical so, like, curves are a thing in civil engineering, everybody. Like that type yeah, thing? Yeah, and then, and then you hold it tangent at 10 for a bit. 
and then you go back to zero and have the transition piece be the right length and that way it doesn't get too silly. Oh, that looks silly already. The vertical curve is... <laughs> well, it is ultimately 10%. And it's got like a bump in it. It does have a bump in it. That's weird. Why is that? Because math is hard. That is true. Math is hard. So bump in it? Yeah. <laughs> but why? Why does it do that? I would love to know. Those did mine? I don't know if mine did that. I wonder if it's a client side thing. So I'm, I'm in. To, I'm, I'm in to... circle mode. Were you not in circle mode? Yeah, I am mode? too. Because so there's my 10% start piece, and then if I lay it 10% tangent, it does that. I don't see your start piece. Uh, it's underneath yours, and oh, there's no that, bump in it, which means, uh, guess what, everybody? It turns out there's one thing that is better as a client like in Reds Online. Leg without a bump. Which All right. makes objectively no sense. QMA, please fix are your you, broken are you garbage. You're at 10%? You're at yeah, 10%? Yeah, that's still? 10%. And then that's flat now. But like, then the question is, is it is it truly 10%? I don't know. Why don't you lay a 10% next to it? And we'll see what happens. My 10% swallows your 10%. Oh, boy. Here, just delete your 10%. Oh, but it's so pretty. Delete, delete your whole line. Oh, now mine really swallows it. All right, so if I do okay, this. There we go. Yeah. Oh, look, it builds it without a hump. Hmm. Yeah, but the but it's steeper at the bottom than it is at the top. It's making an uh, a sinusoid. You can if you get far enough away from it, you can see how the steepness changes. How is this for height? It's fine. All right, there we go. And then link that up and that should hopefully do the thing. <coughs> Actually, now I can delete this extra piece. Oh yeah. Because yeah. it should just make the curve and not look stupid, I hope. All right, Heist, here we go. Boom. Boom. Link. All right, that actually looks pretty good. That does look Comes pretty good. Comes up with a nice shallow S, and then we hump. And then we do the hump. And then we do the hump. All right, perfect. Then we hump them, pick the direction, pick the direction, hump into lanes, and then we got to extend the lanes, and how do we connect them all up at the end here? So we'll just do just like a normal yard ladder at the other end, where all the switches are just in a row. So that it's easy to switch out that way, and when you're going back in, back out, you don't and have to. And then they go back onto the main. Yeah. So the the whole thing is, when you're trying to pick a lot of random different tracks really quickly, you want to throw all the switches in one place. So we put all the switches as close together as we could on this end. But when right. you're deliberately going, okay, well I need to grab stuff from lane five and put them on lane two, or some cars from lane five and put them on lane three, etc. You just want to throw those two switches so it doesn't matter and it's easiest to just put them in a line. So we'll just put the, you know, all the switches just bang, 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 bang in a line, connect the lanes up, okay, and then so we're there. I get to here, which is I guess the length of one lane. This is what we got, because now we're at the end of the, the, the yard. Yep. Um... But like I have, you can see I've got this diverging lane where the main, the the runaround track, whatever, goes back onto the main. Yep. Do I, like, what do I do? Where do I connect? Should I connect? So we're trying to keep our yard lead. <coughs> sorry, we're trying to keep our yard lead separate from the main, right? So that's where right. it's going to come off of this. So we'll have another drill track off this way, and typically. If we were to, that would, so this would switch back, like, like, would this do something like, like, obviously a little further out, but it would do something like this and then connect back up to all the, exactly, the ladders. Yes. And then depending okay. on how, what side we want to put our shop on or our roundhouse on, and also how we want to do that, either we'd put it off of this lead separate from the drill track so that you can switch without fouling the roundhouse, or we'd put it on the other side. But this drill track needs to be long enough to, 
grab all of your train pieces, go completely straight with it, and then what? Back it out completely, stick, and then stick get it on out the on this on this line here, so that an engine can get put on it from either side. Yeah. So an engine, so an engine would come from the roundhouse on this line. Yep. Come in this way. And it would either do and it before. You'd have, so you'd have you'd have a lo like a yard engine that assembles the whole train onto this track, and then goes out of the way. And then your road engine comes in and picks it up and then leaves out the main. Yep. Or the road engine goes first okay. so that it can get all the way down at the other end because we're just doing a single kind of and arrival departure thing, direction. right? And then it, the uh, yard switcher puts it on top. So we're doing it a little bit differently than the modern railroad day or modern day railroad would do, and that's just because of the way that the game is and the space. And there's not really any dedicated reason to have like a dedicated inbound and outbound yard and everything. So we'll oh, we're have... gonna have it. We're gonna have an outbound. We're gonna we're gonna build an outbound track that goes back on the other side. We're gonna loop this all the way around. Oh, that, that's just a return loop though. This is this is our inbound outbound for uh, trains entering and leaving the yard. Oh, I see. You're saying no. they would have a second track, like on the other side, for assembling trains and sending them out. Yeah, and, and then so oh, like, oh, let's do that. Well, we can do that if we want. Let's assemble yeah. them. Can, could we have two lines on the other side? Assemble them on the other side and send them out. That way, so the road engine comes out, picks it up, and then goes. Sure. Yeah, we could do it that way. It's more so complicated. Your inbound, but... your inbound is this. So we'd still need a drill track on the inbound, or no? You'd still need the drill track on both ends. And we'd still need the turn and off for- both tracks have to connect to the roundhouse. Well, on on the one end, yes, yeah. Okay. This is gonna, this is gonna be cool. And very tedious. Yep. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see about getting some switches figured out and see if we can't get the lead going and uh, we'll see in just a few minutes, folks. Yeah. It'll be zero seconds on your end, but you know, long time on our end. Yeah, no, it's fine. I had, I had nothing else to do. All right, so uh, it's all built, and uh, yeah, gonna... it's built. You'll notice we don't have a look at this. There's no main line anymore. There's only one main line coming into the freight depot. The rest is just open trees. The only one, and uh, we've got everything we own pretty much put in this train, including Betsy. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> actually, this is we, the, this we don't is have the cursed the... two four. Oh, it's two it's two four 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 four. Oh. four. Yeah, yeah two well, four tender, four four. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, You'd never fine. have an engine with drive wheels like. Like, is there, there, there isn't an engine with drive wheels, idler wheels, and then drive wheels, is there? Uh, you know, someone's gonna, someone's gonna have an example like now, four, two, but... Four, and then would you even call it a 2424? Two, because four? that wouldn't make sense, like... You'd, you'd keep the order of the wheels, but you just have to know that it was weird. Um, I'm sure that that probably existed in some equivalent somehow. Some I am not familiar with it, but... Anyway, we're, we're coming in. We, we don't have our hoppers. We don't have, like, the class 48. So we're not everything we own, but we've got oh, yeah, most the hoppers things are we down own. The, yeah, uh, they're still they're down at smelter. smelter. And they will be Just for, Bring them you back know. and hump them sometimes. So interestingly enough, now that we only have one main, um, we, we kind of kibosh the idea of the output track. I think where we last left it, we were talking about maybe doing an outbound yeah, line. Yeah, we inbound. were, and, and the spacing didn't really quite work out, and it was a little no. bit... A little bit too far removed from the narrow gauge idea so we're gonna just use the inbound track as the outbound track so it's kind of the the go between between the yard and the main so if you're lined yeah. in this way you're gonna be doing yard speed you're gonna be underneath yard rules and all sorts of stuff like that uh but if you're lying the other way you can just continue on the main track as this as if nothing nothing else exists so. right so the the line on our left here would be the main which would eventually go to the oil and the ironworks and all that stuff. All that good um, stuff, yep. And also continues that way back to the sawmill and all that stuff as well. So it would appear you still have cars to go. We have a super long. This would be this. So this would be what a lead track is. What this would be, or so this, this would is be... this is your inbound track or right. inbound outbound or exchange inbound, outbound. track, right? Right. And so right, we're clear now. Uh, we're the, all clear. The, so I'm gonna the, break. The and then we've we simulated have, we have space uh, for like ten more cars. This is great. Beautiful, yeah. So we've simulated the the roundhouse, and then the the flat end of the yard as well on this end. And honestly, we're probably gonna want like telegraph huts on both ends of this thing. I mean, this thing's huge. Oh yeah, that's true. We need so a telegraph hut on the other end. We of would this stop yard. these cars, and you might want to go get the Glenbrook ready, and I'll line these switches over here. Oh no! I wanna, I wanna live through the whole experience. Oh, okay. I don't wanna... you, oh, oh so we're, we're getting the hold whole. Hold on. So, so road engine. Cut off your cars. Gonna, cut off. Cut, cut off the off. cars. Um, 
I might as well we take the, our road engine. Our might as well take it. take Betsy. The whole thing, the whole road engine that has yeah. uh, still just a, like maybe three quarters of a sneeze of tractive effort now with two of them. So right. So we have two options here. I threw down a water tower just because we still do have like the sanding and fuel at the freight depot. Although at some point we should probably move that. Everything over to here. would come here. So on the yeah. way out, you like depending on the way the railroad was set up you would have lots of different interfaces between mechanical and the, the true roundhouse because the roundhouse would be where they're doing like real work on the I engines. Like my Y, by the way. Look, uh, I built a Y. Dude, I like it. it. And it's on the lead. That's fun. Okay. Yeah, well, I didn't have a space here, so I figured it's a it's a Y on the lead. So if you were just turning around and leaving, you would bring your road engine through the Y, turn it around, and then just go right back out before, like while the other cars are being humped, I guess. I don't right, know. Okay. So I don't, I don't know. I didn't really think it through. We'll, but we'll do there. another episode building out the roundhouse and talking about roundhouse and all, all sorts of those things. But um, depending on how things are set up, a lot of roundhouses usually had the coal, fuel, water, everything, sand, all right next to the roundhouse. Like right here. And then they would have like a ready track where engines that were ready to go that had been cold and watered and everything would be sitting outside if they were, you know, assigned to their next things. They could Wait, be grabbed. so we should build a switch off this track. We, we could do that. You don't have to do that. And there gauge probably I mean, wouldn't Presumably, do that, we'd but... only be taking out one engine at a time. Yeah, like... so the, the roundhouse. And, and for railroads online where servicing doesn't mean anything because the locomotives are just god kings that need they no, fire up, like, no fuel yeah, or water or anything. Yeah, yeah, like it doesn't really matter. But, you know, yeah, right. for, for fun, we could do it if we want to. Uh, now uh, we need to run to the other side of the yard. And I'm debating it may actually be faster to teleport and then run the other way. Yeah, I'm gonna put a telegraph. Race at the hump. you, race you. Okay, you can race. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a telegraph like right at the hump because that kind of makes sense to have one. Yeah, for sure. Right where you're humping. You need to make sure yeah, you this, can get back. You to don't realize you how far yeah. this yard is, then you realize we're actually like at the roundhouse location. We're halfway to the oil Dude, field. Dude, so this like yard real, is insane. Real train facilities get so big so fast. Just at my shop, um, the entrance to the shop was controlled by an electronic derail device so that we couldn't accidentally run out onto the main and the guys from the main, if the switch was lying the wrong way, wouldn't actually run into the shop and all that stuff. And it How was, does an electronic derail device work? You just put like a stopper up in the track or it's something? Got, or? It's got a, a like a, a little derail clamp that comes over the, the rail and would knock any wheels off and it's operated by a switch oh, good. machine. So it, just flips, it just flips the train. I mean, it wouldn't flip the train, but it would put it in the dirt, yeah. But when you're talking about accidentally running into buildings and people and, and dudes that are working it's on stuff... It's better to put a train in the dirt. It's better to sure. put the train in the dirt than to, you know, harm all sorts of people. So, um... It was protected by that derail, and that derail, if it failed, or the electronics on it would break, you'd have to go operate it manually. And it was right. so far away! You went on a journey to go get to the south derail at Interbay. I mean, it was like, good god, man. I, I don't I don't know the exact distance. It was over a kilometer from the office, I would have to bet. Like, and it would take you forever to get there. It was obnoxious. All right, here we go. I put a telegraph down. I had to face it the right way. Well, I've got the Toho bro and uh, trussed up the fire, and now I'm running into the inbound outbound track, and we're gonna grab the cars from the rear here, and then we're gonna hump them. Right. So, so now, yeah. If if this is where I, you know, this is where things kind of don't make sense to me. So you're gonna grab all these and pull them backwards, but uh, I gotta put your probe up. Yep. You gotta, uh, gotta get me ready to go. hump. But yes. You, no. What if this caboose was something you weren't allowed to hump? Yeah, so this would have to be set out typically, and a caboose would technically not. How be would you? That we'd how hump. would you set this out? That you would grab this right now and then just push it onto the main or something, or you'd have another line to put with, it on. With our setup, yeah, you'd have to put it on the main basically. But yeah, you'd probably have. You'd usually have like multiple inbound tracks like this, so you could stash stuff that couldn't be humped for whatever reason. And then just bring it all the way to the end where it meets back up with the... It would be added on the flat switch end, right? With a caboose, I mean, that's a little bit different because the era of cabooses and humps, um, for their prolificness, did not necessarily overlap. Yes, we still right. have cabooses and they occasionally see service. Um, and we have more humps now. And, and there were some rare humps early on, but uh, the caboose would usually be added on at the end. But for other cars that needed to be so set in this out... Case you just set them you back would, over when, and rather when you got to them, right? You'd be at the base right. of the hump and stick them out. So. so so, in this, you would have to pull the caboose out, put it on the main, hump the entire train, and then grab the caboose and push it somewhere. Yeah, and and realistically, we probably should have added another lane, but I didn't think of that in the moment. So, And it doesn't really matter for where it's online because we 
There's nothing no, that we can can't tell pump. Quickly. It's so. like it's yeah. I have no idea. I wonder if we can fit the whole train over the hump. I was looking when we were coming around the corner, and it was close, but I felt like we could. Okay. Well, you can see this all the be cars. A good I test can't. Of so the length of this lead track. Yeah, it's the whole thing. The drill track's got to be pretty long, and that's why you want it separate from the main. If we were backing out on the main right now, we would be blocking everybody's traffic. So now trains can run past us while we do our switching. You have three cars left. Okay, I got plenty of you space are, here. I got, I got another. You are now clear. I got another five at least back here. All right, so I push you onto the hump now. Yeah, you line us to the hump, and then you're gonna want to line whatever the first cut of cars is to whatever track makes sense so it's to you. Cornwood. And then I'll start shoving up, and then uh, okay, if I need so to, let's just let's just put the cordwood on the on the third track, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably something like that. Second or third. On its own. The tracks, remember, they're going to get the longest is on the farthest left, and the shortest is on the farthest right. Actually, I'm going to put cordwood to the fourth track. Okay. So the longer lengths of cars, like the planks and stuff, we're going to actually know third track because it'll be pretty long eventually. Like probably yeah, take flats and logs stake, on the first. Stake track. for the first for sure logs or cordwood on second probably 50 50 on that yeah we'll put the caboose on like the far right track and then eventually we'll hopper somewhere in the middle there so okay so i'm gonna have to like ride this cordwood thing and break it right because it'll yeah i guess we are very manual in this endeavor normally you'd, you would need more people to do this if we we're you know without having the automatic brakes and everything uh so right. let me know so the automatic when... brakes would be built into the track for yeah home yards. Like, yeah it's... And they're electronically controlled and everything, and, and they automatically slow the car down so that it won't uh, hit too hard when it does. Okay, so in. I should actually have cut these already then. Uh, you can cut them any, at any time, really. Usually, they'll eventually take off on their own. They will. Um, Oops, it, they're already doing. They're already moving. Okay, all right. so you can well, just, I'll, you can I'll just wait stop there. then. Yeah. And I want to come oh my up God, and see the action awesome. a little bit. They're actually. Normally. This is long enough hill. In the modern day. The, uh, there'd be a couple guys standing at the top of the hump pulling the pins of the cars as they roll over. So right. that one guy on each side While they're moving. out and everything. While they're moving, and they just keep it going. And the, theoretically, ideally, uh, usually these days they're actually run with a remote control locomotive, which is a whole other subject, but... You just keep pulling but pins. But they're manually and decoupling like, in between cars while There's no, no way to automatically do that, yeah, so... Well, that's cool. It looks all like right. you've already made it all the way in the lane, so you can just stop those, and we'll get the next set going. Yeah, I still have a ton of lane to go, here. but yeah, like, uh, oh, I'll just doesn't, stop It doesn't matter here. where wherever you stop them. No, lane, I guess you know. ideally, the now the next set of cars we hump, we won't even have to put brakes on, because they'll just hit these they set hit of these, cars yeah, exactly. and stop. Hopefully, uh, hopefully not so fast that they cause a derailment, but that's, that's why the automatic brakes became a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is awesome. I can't believe the humping actually works. It's so great. We need, we need cool. more cars now. We need just like $10 million and then we can buy like 100 cars and we definitely, uh, cars. <laughs> what, what, what's the uh, what's the saying? You ate with your eyes, not your mouth or something when you're like, oh yeah, I grabbed yeah, too much food. Yeah, those, we, 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 steak flats. This will be lane number we one. Built, uh, we built too much yard. <laughs> actually, I guess steak flats, you know what? If we're doing it according to car tiers, steak flats would be number two. Yeah, but, I mean, you could do it by tier, or you could do it by prolificness. Yeah, we're going to put them in number we one. Have, we're going to have more steak fuss. Did have, you already cut them? I did not, no. Well, they're they're definitely ready to be rolling. I can see that. I can come up and cut the cars. That's fine. It's, I, or you I, got, I, it. I got it. I feel like we're just losing a little bit of speed. That's all. Look at them go. Yeah, that's true. We are losing a little bit of that gravity potential, but I don't know. It's yeah. fun. They'll, they'll still roll far enough. It's a 10% grade. And you're, yeah, st you're standing the on the last friction. one, so you added an extra 200 pounds right there. Conductor True. man's a big dude. Yeah, 200 pounds of man weight. 200 pounds of John Railroadson. <laughs> yeah, that all really... It's actually crazy to me that this works, though. It's so cool. Yeah, so yeah, I, I mean... You gotta cut them before you start pushing up while they're still... Because then as soon as they clear the hump, they'll maximum... They'll just go. Yeah, and get yeah the they'll just speed. go as okay. fast as possible. So I'll go back and I'll cut off the, uh, the, the log bunks here off yeah. the caboose and then I'll, I'll just shove and we'll because uh, these will make it ready. Just, they're not going to be very far into the yeah and i guess we have ideally, a lot of lane ideally you'd get it to the other lanes that it's faster to get them later but i guess it doesn't really matter at the end of the day nah i mean we're still gonna have to assemble the train wait we're wait wait to... wait wait railroads online no oh, did you, did no you what i came back and the toho bros tender is just in the dirt all by itself oh, wow. That's interesting. Does not compute. Q 
you may. As long as the engine's still alive, you can just drive it forward. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter, but it's just like, I came back and it was like, everything was fine. Why? Why did it do this? Okay, anyway. Because it, it knew there was too much humping going on. This video is <laughs> the tender, just- The tender uh, could not handle the dad jokes. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> much so much humping involved. It was just, oh, right, I got to set the direction here so we don't- Yeah, line us in, because uh, I'm shoving, so. All right, you're shoving. I'm going to put you to the uh, the second lane here, because we're just- We're all organized. Uh, dude, this is sick. This is actually the coolest thing that we've uh, ever done. This is- I, I, <laughs> This I, is actually- I mean, it's- This is actually really fun. It's really, it's really stupid that this is like for empties and not for full cars. But right. it's like, it's really cool that it, that it works. And like, you know, like we can just let these hump now into that. That's awesome. It's actually the coolest thing ever. Dude. Okay. So we had the idea and it was like, okay, we're going to do that. And this will be whatever. And in my head, I was like, yeah, okay, it'll be cool. But I mean, it's going to be whatever. Yeah, this it's... is a much better hump, by the but way. This is, look... this is actually, oh yeah, it's got so much more speed. Yeah. It'll make it all the way to the end this time. But, dude, like, this actually turned out to be so much cooler than I thought it was going to be. This yeah, it is, actually works. It's this kind is of, actually it's kind of impressive. really neat. <laughs> All right, so hump the caboose. We got to go to the far. Yep. I'll just put the brake on this. Yep, I'm running back. I'm only putting the furthest car brake on all of these, so the next set of cars humping in will eventually slow down, but... Perfect. Yeah, let me cut the caboose, and then I'll kick it over. Um, one, so one would the, they would they build a hump yard on narrow gauge? Like, was is there a there narrow was, gauge? There was hump? there was. Okay, so anytime we put the qualifiers on, it's like, okay, there's gonna be one. I'm sure there's one somewhere. Particularly when you talk about narrow gauge being anything narrow of standard gauge. So like a lot of countries have narrow gauge that's like three foot six inch, but that's actually their standard gauge. Um, right. So I'm sure there is one, but in like the spirit of American narrow gauge railroading and stuff, there wasn't, and there really wasn't traffic to justify it. So, what in the name of QMA is going on here? Why can't I go onto this switch? Do we have two splines here? What's going on? Something strange is afoot. I'm gonna hit it with what? more speed. I don't understand what you're, what are you complaining? I kept bouncing off of the points of the switch, and see, look, it derailed the tender again, and it re-railed itself. It's fine. I'm gonna punt the caboose into orbit. Do we accidentally like? I don't know what's going. On. There must be two splines there somehow, because it is I'll doing some very strange things, and I've derailed the uh, Tahobro on the hump. Nice, you derailed the Tahobro on the hump, and the caboose is not gonna stop. It's going to the right lane. It'll eventually stop. I mean, it'll probably stop when it's too far away. I'm gonna I'll, try and I'll catch fix it. I'll this Tahobro issue. I'm gonna try and uh, catch the caboose, and then we'll bring it. We'll bring it back down. What is going on here with this? I was trying to say something intelligent about narrow gauge humps, and then uh, railroads online isms happened. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's it's. This is a very interesting. I'll delete that switch too. And yeah, there's gotta, it. there's got to be something. Oh god, this is it's I think it's, it's operator gonna operator error is the issue to be honest. Wow, like have... you would you would yeah. con. I, I see like how it is. Got, like, it's just, it's just too much humping in one day for heists, and it just, you know... I, I get excited by the humping, okay? Oh, no, yeah, you're right. The tender just came to a dead stop at the base of that switch. There's like, something is. strange. There are some shenanigans going on in Splineland. Uh -oh, um, so, Khan, the good news is uh, I've caught the caboose, and it is stopping now that the handbrake's on. How did you push every, every car through this I breakage? don't... No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put Glenbook back on the main. You can teleport back to me here, and uh, I can... could. I'm debating grabbing the Betsy or the Zoom. No. Okay. Well, I don't we know. gotta put them on another line too. We gotta actually put like at least one line. Maybe you could do that. Put a line on the other end of the round table, just so we can at least park one engine and turn the other around. You know. Right. Sure. We do have to turn an engine around and use it at some point to make some more money. We that's, do that's... need to. <laughs> This is a terminus sort of at this the issue time. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to delete this spline real quick and replace it. I definitely didn't. There's no double switch. I don't know. That's, that's weird. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but it, uh, the splines were mad at us. That was probably yeah, for no, that was, crap earlier. Definitely, there's definitely an issue there because it was it was bouncing off that weird. And there's like there's no overlapping track or anything, so I don't know. Yeah, very strange. I've added the uh, the extension here, so I'm gonna run the Zuma across, and uh, I guess I'm gonna use the Betsy to shove the uh, the caboose back into its hole because the caboose overran oh, the, uh, the end of track by a good, you know. 
So is it on the lead Four, track? Then? It's on is the lead. Happen? It's halfway down the lead. It's not in the foul of anything else. Like it wouldn't be a problem for it to sit there, but it's very much against the rules. So can't stand for that. Actually, Betsy's not going to have much in the way of boiler pressure for a minute. So I'm going to kick Betsy. <laughs> We're kicking Betsy with Zuma and then I'll park Zuma. That's that. This is the secret. I don't here. understand how you pushed all the cars back across this without issue. And then the engine takes fault with it. And then it the engine might be a weird one for the collision team. thing. I don't know. Code for video games is weird, man. What can I say? All right, Zuma's gonna be parked on the table. Hopefully, Betsy keeps rolling far enough so that I don't have to deal with that. Looks like she's gonna roll just far enough. <laughs> Kick the switch over. Perfect. And we'll, uh, we'll show what the flat end of the yard is for. Because honestly, the flat end of the yard, half of its job is to fix problems that the hump caused. Like something went wrong on the hump. They humped like the car that shouldn't have been. Way or whatever, put it in the just... wrong, yeah, you humped it the wrong way. So you put it in the wrong track, uh, et cetera. Yeah, that, then you could fix it from the flat end rather than the humpy end. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. And actually the, one of the funny things is my, one of my first days at BNSF, we're touring through the Argentine yard in Kansas City. <laughs> and there's derailed tank cars on the inbound tracks on the other side of the bowl. At least I'm pretty sure it was the inbound, but anyway. And it turned out that the flat end switchers of the yard that day had been kicking cars to resort them because they didn't get sorted right or something. And they were right. trying to kick into track 68 and they didn't line the last switch. And so they kicked... Uh, rather than to track 68, they tra kicked it into the inbound, and there was a train in the foul on that inbound on the across that switch because they were not supposed to use it normally. And uh, yeah, they kicked the car at like 15 miles an hour. It hit those tank cars and knocked them off their trucks and tried to knock them over. And thankfully, the the special couplers on tank cars that mitigate crazy derailments and hazmat release and all that stuff did their job, and it was fine. But it was like. Oh, you guys goofed. And I, I got to see the security cam footage of the poor conductor running after the car and like jumping on it while it's moving at like 15 miles an hour, trying to desperately get a handbrake on before he jumps off and the car nails the tank cars. It's like, man, that's a real bad day for that dude. <laughs> Forgot to check but, one switch and now you get to pee in a cup. He didn't have it in notch eight, so. He didn't, you know. he didn't have it in notch eight. That's true. Could have been much worse. Could have been much worse. There could have been school children on the other track. <laughs> there could, there could the have been. The stakes could have been so high. So much higher, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to leave Betsy kind of on the drill track on the on this end because I don't know if we have anything well, else I'm for coming, her. I'm coming through with the Glenbrook. I'm going to go through the Y on the oh, track. Oh, okay. Well, then I need I to... around somehow. I need to get out of your way then. Well, I you will... could follow me through the Y and we could, we could move two engines around. I don't really know if that's common, but it is very possible. You could. Um, Betsy's Land already facing the right is way. is very fast. She's speedy. Um, I think it's the fastest engine in the game. I'm not sure. It's that or the... Um, that or the... Like, like without 280, speed I think. limits, the fastest? Like yeah, without speed... No... Well, no, not, not realistically. Actually, physically in the game, the fastest, I think. Um, though the Cookie 280 apparently does better because the tender is less prone to derail. I think um, I think it's a friend of the channel, Toltry, I believe, or maybe it's somebody else. I can't remember who. Somebody has done uh, speed tests and they did drag races with all the locomotives to see which is the fastest. And I want to say Glenbrook was the fastest, but I'm struggling to remember right now. And if I got once the name wrong, no I'm going to be crucified. Limits, it's fine. But, what, what, once there's no speed limits anywhere in the game, I really want to do that drag race all right. the end, a quarter mile and see what, what they can do. But with speed limits, it feels kind of silly because it's like you're not really drag racing them. You're just testing what the speed limits are set to. Yeah. Yeah. Which feels a little Which dumb. is unfortunate. I really, But I really want to see like, you know, the 0 to 60. I feel like Betsy would just tear out of there. Right, then, itty bitty drivers, but then it tops right, out too fast. Right, but then would get to a top speed that just no one can, like everyone will just pass, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's the name of the game. It's small drivers. But it would be really cool. And we'll get All the right, Glenbrook turned around, and I don't and, know why we are, but we are. Well, Glenbrook's got to be facing the next direction for whatever our next adventure is. It's the the one road engine we have that's worth a darn. Sorry, Montezuma, love you, but 
you know, small. Yeah, we didn't make any money this episode, but we built a hump yard. So yeah, look, you know. we're we're still broke, uh, and we still can't really run trains up the coal mine because you know we're broke. Actually, I'm not that broke. I have forty four hundred dollars. So that's almost, not we're broke, but it's we're... it's not. I by think a next episode. Yet. We do some iron, some double heading iron, you know, eight cars of iron, double head it. Okay. Like we'll be... Okay. It's great. Every episode now we get to end the episode with some humping. Dude. So like, I love ending just... episodes with humping. It, it brings great. a smile Every to my episode... face. Oh my God. Look at that. So wait, so Betsy would be the, the engine now that assembles trains, pushes them out onto this main behind us now. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's where I left it. I mean we don't have to do that, but it no, is no that place actually that it makes sense. Work. So Betsy could assemble the train. We come out of the roundhouse. Betsy pushes the train onto our onto our butt, and then we take off with it. Yep, that's the way it go. And we can and start with that next time. That's gonna be awesome, dude. Dude, this is sick. This is actually looks really really good. Yeah, it's it's definitely working out really well. And I, I I really genuinely like watching it happen and seeing cars get humped like. I didn't expect me to get excited about it. I was going to be like, oh, it's railroads online. Oh, it's pretty cool. But Dude, it's I always actually, get excited about humping. It's okay. genuinely humping really cool, is, man. This yard is, is, is... wicked. And like, I love parallel lines in railroads online when you can build perfectly parallel It is yards. a, a very just... strong satisfaction for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the symmetrical switching at the front. The fact that it's all splits of two, like it's a binary tree that splits off. So right. it's always one of two directions. That's fantastic. That's the way to do it, and that's the, that, like, yeah. that. And that's all the switches. It's great. Uh, this this turned out so cool. I'm yeah. glad this idea worked. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. But now we can hump empties and then pick them up, reassemble our trains, and then leave. Have our roundhouse at the other end. We'll have to. I'll probably. Uh, well, I guess when we do the roundhouse episode, we'll have to move like all the fuel and stuff. I put a water tower there, but we'll have to move. Yeah. You know, all the fuel and sanding. Get all and that moved, and, and we'll figure, figure out, out how to build a roundhouse properly that isn't just a, a ton of engine sheds all slapped around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are cursed. I mean, I get it. That's all we have, but they're still cursed. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like if we had that many engine sheds, it would just be a bunch of straight tracks with, like, a bunch of switches going to them. Yeah, which those also existed. So, anyway. All in a line. Yeah. But anyway, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, we can. This is amazing, dude. This this hill looks sick. The hump actually looks sick. Yeah, it's it's really cool, and it and it looks pretty representative of of what they are. So I'm I'm really pleased with this. Yeah, no, this is cool. But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Check out Heise's channel link in the description. Uh, like, subscribe, and we'll see you all next time. Check it all next time. Later. Bye.